Hello everybody, welcome back for more proteomics. So this particular lecture is going to kind of pull together a lot of what we've already talked about, understanding that the whole purpose of our lab project this semester is to purify and then eventually characterize the enzyme tyrosinase. So we're really going to start talking about purification strategies in this lecture. The first two topics on this checklist are mostly going to be review for us, but along the way throughout this entire lecture, we're going to learn about all the different ways we can go about purifying not only tyrosinase, but other enzymes or other proteins based upon the sorts of physical and chemical characteristics that we have the means to find out about. So let's go ahead and start with a little bit of a review on the use of detergents. So we've already discussed how detergents can be very useful because detergents like the ones that you see here, like Triton X100 uh, or sodium dodecyl sulfate, they are what we call uh, amphipathic molecules, meaning that part of the molecule is hydrophilic and can interact with water, and the other part of the molecule is hydrophobic and is capable of interacting with other hydrophobic substances. Namely, we're usually talking about membrane proteins, which we've talked before about how a major characteristic of membrane proteins is that they have a lot of hydrophobic amino acid side chains, which makes the protein able to insert into the membrane. So we've already talked about how detergents are going to reconstitute or solubilize the membrane proteins into structures called micelles. A micelle is just a big spherical aggregate of these kinds of amphipathic molecules like detergents in which the hydrophobic uh, groups point inwards and the hydrophilic groups point outwards, just like a folded protein. Now, when we're talking about detergents, we need to distinguish between non-ionic detergents and ionic detergents. So ionic detergents are going to be those like sodium dodecyl sulfate and sodium deoxycholate, namely that they contain a charged functional group. So it is true that ionic detergents will do the job of solubilizing the proteins, but because they also have that electrical charge to them, they have a increased capacity to potentially denature the protein because they are going to disrupt salt bridges. By that we mean the interactions between acidic and basic functional groups within the protein itself, and then also disrupt hydrogen bonds. So whether we're talking about unfolding a protein or causing a protein to not be able to uh, interact with the water that surrounds it, like we saw before with uh, ammonium sulfate. Ionic detergents are very, very harsh in the sense that you're probably not going to solubilize your protein and also maintain its shape and function. So we'll talk about ionic detergents much later in the semester when we really get into gel electrophoresis and SDS page and those sorts of things. But truly, if you are trying to purify a protein and then also be able to assay its function later, you're probably going to want a non-ionic detergent, something like Triton X100. So because non-ionic detergents do not have that charged functional group, they do not run the risk of dis disrupting all those intramolecular forces that we talked about within the folded protein itself. So you can truly just reconstitute the membrane protein in my cells and then leave it at that. You can hopefully uh, maintain the folded uh, structural integrity of the protein and just pull it out of the membrane itself. So when you're talking about ionic detergents like SDS or sodium deoxycholate, we call these chaotropic agents. So you can kind of see the word chaos is in the prefix there. So that kind of tips you off right away as to what these kinds of agents are going to do. So these are the types of agents that are going to disrupt protein folding and then probably denature the protein. So in the picture that you see here, you see a folded protein that is held together by a number of intramolecular forces, including salt bridges. The interaction between the uh, positive uh, basic side chains and the acidic uh, uh, negatively charged side chains. 
So with SDS, which has a negative functional group there, it can actually wedge itself in there and actually unfold the protein. And now the protein is actually coated with these SDS molecules, giving the fully unfolded protein an overall negative charge. And that is actually something that we can put to good use later when we talk about SDS page. But if you're actually aiming to keep a protein uh, in its folded and native configuration, it's probably not what you want. Uh, so I also mentioned ammonium sulfate would be a good example of a chaotropic agent in the sense that we talked before about how increasing the ionic strength of your solution that contains protein to a certain extent will prevent the protein uh, from forming hydrogen bonds with the water that surrounds it. And eventually, if you get the ionic strength high enough, the protein's going to fall out of solution. So it's the same sort of thing. You're either going to disrupt protein folding, denature the protein, or in some way disrupt the protein's ability to interact with the solvent that surrounds it. Uh, now, certainly this is not a DNA class or a nucleic acid class or the sort of class where we would focus on anything but proteins. But if you've taken a, a class that focuses on DNA before, you may have done an ethanol precipitation of protein, or a, a, excuse me, of DNA. So in the same way that ammonium sulfate acts as a chaotropic agent for protein, ethanol does the same thing for nucleic acid. So basically increasing the amount of ethanol that is in an aqueous solution uh, basically steals water molecules away from the DNA and causes the salt in the solution to precipitate the DNA. All right, so that's gonna do it for that quick little review of detergents and other chaotropic agents. So join us next time and we will do another quick little review on centrifugation. We've already talked about that in a separate lecture, but we'll go ahead and discuss it again since the whole purpose of this particular set of lecture slides is to focus on uh, protein purification. So thank you, thank you for your attention. I will see you next time. So long.